Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'll talk about refined web data set, which has been used to train the Falcon LLM models. So let's get started. What is refined web, right? And what is the need for coming up with this thing called as refined web? LLMs, uh, the large language models, are trained on a mixture uh, of filtered web data and curated high quality corpora. Most of these popular LLMs that you see recently, they've been trained on this mixture. Uh, you know, uh, while the main part is still filtered web data, uh, a small part is also this curated high quality corpora, such as social media conversations, books, technical papers, Reddit, GitHub, all of those. Right? But then how scalable is curation? Now, large language models are getting larger and larger, which basically means they require a lot of data to pre-train. Uh, while a large amount of data is available from uh, the filtered web part, but then how scalable is this high quality curated corpus? Right? It's not that scalable. So is it possible to actually just use filtered and deduplicated web data and lead to powerful models rather than actually depend on some special curation of high quality data? Okay? And to answer that question, uh, uh, you know, folks basically created this data set called as refined web. Uh, it con consists of 5 trillion tokens that have been obtained from common crawl corpus. Uh, this data set has been used to train Falcon 1.3 and 7.5 billion model uh, billion models, which are uh, which are uh, you know uh, uh, results for which have been presented in this paper. However, this data set along with uh, other curated data sets have, have also been used so as to train 7 billion and 40 billion Falcon models, which basically are at the top right now on the open LLM hugging face leaderboard. Um, uh, a small part of this data set, uh, 600 billion token data set, has also been publicly made available as part of Hugging Face. Okay, so let's look at how this data compares with other data sets. Um, so Refined Web is right there. From a size perspective, the data set is about uh, 5 trillion tokens or essentially about 5000 giga tokens. Uh, it is publicly available. A small part of it is publicly available. Uh, now, if you compare it with other data sets, well, there is C4 data set, uh, which was, uh, you know, which, which basically contains about 360 giga tokens, and it's also public. So there are public data sets, uh, you know, of around that size, 360 giga tokens, 370 giga tokens, 283 giga tokens, and so on. Right? And then there are private data sets, which have been used to train GPT-3 and, uh, uh, and also pre-train, you know, PAM model. Um, their size are known, but then those data sets are not public. There is the file data set, which is 340 giga tokens public data set. Right? Now, uh, these public, uh, so the first block basically was, was just about web data sets. Now, these three data sets are essentially curated data sets, which basically means that the filtered web part basically comprise only, 20, uh, let's say, 18% of the pile. The remaining part is actually curated. Right? Uh, on the other hand, refined web is 100% web data set, no curation at all. Right? Um, now, uh, all of these data sets basically have been uh, obtained by doing some pre-processing on common crawl or, and then deduplication as well. Right? So different data sets follow different kinds of uh, pre-processing and deduplication mechanisms. Right? So essentially, for example, PAM model is filter trained on, uh, uh, on, on high quality data and uh, uh, how did they do deduplication is unknown. Didn't really mention in the paper. Um, so uh, similarly, many other data sets have been uh, filled, have been pre-processed using uh, some rules or some block lists and so on. Now, how is Refined Web, uh, um, you know, pre-processed and filtered or deduplicated? Uh, more details are actually in the table below. So, in fact, the way Refined Web has been pre-processed in some ways is using three different steps: data preparation, filtering, and deduplication. So amongst these three steps, essentially, uh, sorry, uh, amongst these three steps, essentially, uh, you know, uh, the the sub steps are as follows: in document preparation, first URL filtering was done, then text extraction and language identification. So what does URL filtering mean? You of course aggregate block lists uh, from several places. Uh, you also do URL scoring and remove URLs with low scores, and you also remove, uh, you know, basically spam URLs, uh, adult URLs, things of that kind. You also remove those which are common high quality sources. So the idea behind creating refined web was to actually create a, a part of the web which is not curated at all. So therefore, they on purpose removed high quality data sources also like archive, Wikipedia, Reddit, GitHub, etc. So just to show the power of uh, the filtered web uh, even without curated data sets at all. 
text extraction part. So the common curl corpus is available into in two different formats. One is called as the WARC format, the other is called as the WET format. So WARC format is the HTML format. WET format is basically uh, text extracted from those HTML uh, files. Uh, However, what they found was that text extraction was not up to the mark, and therefore they actually uh, just used the WARC format and they used the WARC IO uh, Python library. They also used uh, this other Python library for extracting uh, the text from these HTML web pages. Uh, language identification. So uh, they uh, mainly focused on English, and therefore they essentially uh, used the fast text uh, classifier uh, trained on 176 different languages. Uh, from ccnet so as to essentially uh, take only those web pages where the dominant language has has probability greater than 0.6 okay. now the other two steps in uh, in pre-processing are filtering and deduplication so as part of filtering they did document wise filtering and line wise filtering document wise filtering basically means uh, you try to uh, get rid of those parts of the documents where the in document reputation is very high um, also you try to use quality heuristics like uh, uh, remove those documents which are too short or too long. Also remove those lines or those or those documents where the symbol to word ratio is is uh, is is very high. Right. Uh, line wise filtering basically uses line wise heuristics. So for example, you remove undesirable lines like call to actions, navigation buttons, lines with very small number of words or very large number of words, uh, social lines related to social counters like three likes and so on. Deduplication step. Well, uh, as part of deduplication, two steps were done. Deduplication itself and URL deduplication. So document deduplication and URL deduplication. So document deduplication was again done in two parts, exact removal versus fuzzy removal. So fuzzy deduplication was done using minhash, a very popular uh, hashing algorithm, so as to find nearest neighbors very quickly, right? And exact uh, deduplication was done, uh, um, you know, um, uh, with, with suffix areas, with suffix areas. Uh, URL deduplication, so you can remove URLs uh, which have been revisited across common crawl dumps. So it is observed that common crawl uh, dumps, essentially multiple dumps have the same URLs repeated, even if no change was done, no change was made to the actual web page. So therefore it was important to get rid of those URLs uh, which are already visited and remove them from the uh, from the next few common crawl dumps so as to avoid uh, URL level duplication. Okay. So what do these steps do to the common call corpus? Well, this is what happens. So if you start with 100% common call corpus, document preparation sort of brings down the corpus to about 50%. Filtering brings that down to about uh, you know, uh, 23, 24%. And then deduplication finally brings it down to about 12%. Right. So essentially, uh, the overall um, uh, or the overall uh, five trillion corpus that has been obtained essentially is uh, about 12% of the overall common crawl. Uh, now, um, uh, so uh, so essentially this entire pipeline, they call it as a macro data refinement pipeline, and it removes about 90% of the documents from common crawl. Uh, filtering and deduplication each result in about 50% removal, 50% are non-English. In fact, what you observe is that language identification uh, leads to a lot of documents being removed, right? 24% are low quality, um, you know, basically uh, just uh, bad quality documents, and about 12% are, are duplicates, which are also removed. Uh, now they evaluate their model on these tasks. So uh, you know these are tasks uh, across different NLP uh, kind of. Uh, 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 these tasks cover a whole bunch of natural language processing. For example, sentence completion, coreference resolution, question answering, uh, natural language inference, and so on. And uh, this chart basically shows uh, uh, on the x-axis the compute power required in uh, petaflop days. So essentially. Uh, that's basically, uh, uh, you know, a PF day. So one PF day is basically so many floating point operations. So assuming 10 raised to 15 um, as one peta flop, 10 raised to 15 floating point operations, and in one per second. So that's many. That's the peta peta flop days. Um, and the way this peta flop days compute was computed uh, was was computed is basically using this formula 6nd, where n is the number of parameters and d is the pre-training data set size. Yeah, so that's basically the rough formula that has been used to compute this uh, to come up with this compute. Okay? So and uh, what you see on the y-axis is basically aggregated performance across these tasks across these tasks. So what are the models that are being compared? Well, uh, several models have been compared. Uh, uh, the Falcon, uh, uh, you know, one billion and seven billion kind of models, right? So essentially, um, then uh, uh, also the model using uh, um, this pipeline, the macro data uh, refinement pipeline, but on the pile corpus, right? So that's that. And other things that have been compared are the Palm model, uh, the GPT-3 model, 
Um, and what you see here is that uh, um, the refined web corpus essentially gives you reasonably good results, reasonably good results, right? So they are comparable to GPT-3. In fact, those results are better than the results that you can obtain using the file corpus, right? So that's that's that. Um, uh, and this is all zero shot performance. So the idea is that at equivalent uh, compute budget, the Falcon refined web kind of models significantly outperform. Uh, so remember, Falcon refined web models are different from the Falcon models themselves because Fal Falcon models have been trained using uh, uh, using corp uh, using the refined web corpus plus other curated corpus, right? So this is basically Falcon RW only, Falcon refined web models. They are actually significantly better compared to the pile and uh, they match the performance of the GPT-3 models. They match the performance of the GPT-3 models at equivalent compute budget. Okay. Uh, lastly, let me talk about uh, a few more characteristics of this data set. So essentially, uh, if you use the same macro data pipeline across different data sets like Oscar uh, or C4 data set or the pile data set, this is what happens. So filtering um, uh, typically removes 25% of the Oscar data set, 40% of the other version of the Oscar data set, 16.4%. And you see, I mean, uh, a whole bunch from the pile corpus as well. Deduplication removes 45%. Filtering plus deduplication removes about 66% from the pile corpus. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at the C4 corpus, uh, the two operations together don't remove that much, just 17.9%. So basically, C4 corpus is already um, you know, filtered and deduplicated to a large extent. On the other hand, Oscar, the uh, later version also, if you do filtering plus deduplication, you remove a whole bunch. What you also observe is, uh, uh, you know, if you basically uh, do deduplication, uh, essentially you observe that there are gains in performance uh, compared to the base data set. Compared to the base data set, there are gains in performance, significant gains in performance. So everywhere you see positive uh, things happening if you essentially do deduplication. Deduplication brings a steady performance uh, boost across the board. Right? But if you actually compare uh, about filtering, filtering well, I mean, if you do filtering, in most cases you see gains uh, after you do filtering. However, you see some losses as well. So basically on Oscar data set, if you filter, you actually see a reduced performance in that sense. But in general, you know, if you basically do both, uh, you t you uh, tend to observe that filtering plus deduplication, the macro data filtering pipeline actually works. And uh, you essentially see gains across the board, across all the uh, web data sets, public web data sets. Okay. Uh, here's a comparison of how do the sentence uh, document lengths look like in terms of tokens. So if you look at, and this is a log scale. So if you look at refined web, this is basically about uh, uh, 200 to 300 words, uh, 200 to 300 tokens um, per document, right? Um, so in, in that sense, it is uh, pretty similar to the pile corpus. These are all uh, refined web corpora. So essentially, refined web is the original refined web. Uh, I mean, the refined web after the entire pipeline, RW filtered and RW raw are at these stages. So this is RW raw after doing document preparation, and RW filtered is basically the corpus that you get after the filtering step. Uh, so that's that. Uh, they also created refined web uh, universal or refined web uh, a multilingual kind of a data set which uh, excludes English. So what you see here, these are the top 20 languages that are there in the refined web uh, multilingual. So Russian is at the top, uh, then it is German, Spanish, Japanese, French, and so on. Um, so although Hindi is the third most spoken language, it doesn't really um, uh, come up in the top 20 languages that you see here. Toxicity score wise, so they also experimented by taking documents and then putting them up on perspective API and measuring the toxicity. And what you observe is that the toxicity uh, of the refined web uh, uh, corpus is uh, uh, more or less, uh, you know, the variation in toxicity score across uh, the entire collection is more or less in line with the other public corpora like the pile uh, C4 and Oscar. OK, so that's that. In summary, we talked about the refined web corpus, which basically involves a macro data filtering pipeline, which does stringent filtering and deduplication that results in a 5 trillion token web only corpus obtained from common crawl, uh, suitable to produce models which are competitive with state of the art performance. Sometimes they even outperform the large language models trained on curated corpora like the pile. Right? So um, uh, they have released publicly released a 600 giga tokens extract of the refined web. Uh, which basically consists of about uh, 968 million individual web pages. And uh, if you download it, it's basically 2.8 TB uncompressed. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, this, this data set, refined web data set, uh, along with some curated corpora, has been used to train Falcon 7 billion and Falcon 40 billion models, uh, which are at the top uh, of the open LLM hugging face leaderboard. Okay, hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage.
Thank you.